Goal. By Elton Gar. The camera swooped over the soccer field, focusing on the goalkeeper as it hovered 15 feet over the perfectly manicured grass. It moved in perfect unison with the dozens of other drone cameras that recorded every angle of the play. Zach ignored the cameras as he flipped the ball sideways to his teammate, then slipped past the defender as it turned to follow the ball. His teammate could have shot, and the odds of scoring would have been higher if it did, but Zach had insisted the ball should be passed back if this situation occurred, and his teammate followed those instructions unerringly. The pass was perfect, the ball spinning, so it practically stopped in front of him. Zach should have been nervous. If this didn't work he could be fired, but there were more important things to think about than his job. And even if there weren't, it was too late. He needed to focus on the game. He let his training take over. He kicked the ball as hard as he could, into the upper left corner of the net. It was a perfect shot. It had to be, because the goalie moved with perfect precision towards the ball, missing it by inches. And as the ball hit the back of the net, everything and everyone seemed to stop. The crowd sat in silent shock. Zack stopped, unable to move for several seconds, then overtaken by the realization that he had succeeded, he began to bounce up and down in excitement. That seemed to trigger the crowd, and the slow realization of what they had just seen rippled through them. First, one young man near the front yelled in excitement, then, as if given permission, there were others, and then more, until every person in the stadium was standing and cheering, forgetting for a moment which team they had been rooting for. Zach had done the impossible. As the deafening noise from the crowd grew, both teams returned silently and unemotionally to their starting positions, and the ball rose, hovered for a moment, then returned to the center of the field. Zach fell behind his team as the exhaustion overwhelmed him. What helped him was Paul, who slapped him on the back in congratulations. He held the same position as Zach on the opposing team, though he played defense like most others. The score didn't change. Zach understood. Right now, hundreds of computers were examining every camera angle of Zach's attack, looking for the rule he had broken that allowed him to score against opponents who were so much better than him. Play continued for two full minutes before the point appeared on the scoreboard. Zach stopped in mid-play and pointed at the scoreboard. He was too exhausted to be of much use anyway, and the game itself was meaningless compared to what Zach had done. Zach had broken the inspoken rule at the heart of the sport. He wasn't on the team to score goals. He was supposed to stay out of the way to allow his team the best chance to win. A random human element designed to be the weak link so one of the robot teams could win against another virtually identical team. The rest of the game was uneventful. Zack's team lost as they had lost every game since he had become the team's human. Not one human in the stadium cared who won. He had for one second been better than the robots. He had proved that humans could match the clockwork perfection of the robots and perhaps, under the right circumstances, overcome it. That would change everything. Author's note. Automation is coming for your job. The only difference is how long it will take. If you're a doctor or a lawyer, it may take a few more years, though it's being worked on. But if you're a truck driver, fast food worker, or work in a factory, the mechanisms already exist to replace you. Computers are even learning to make art. It's just a question of cost versus benefit. I think this is a good thing. Not because automation will create more jobs. As much as people claim that is what happens, it isn't. We didn't replace the farming jobs for a century and a half ago with factory jobs. Instead, we expanded what we expected out of life. We decided we wanted refrigerators, TVs, microwaves, air conditioners, more cars and computers. Perhaps we'll find more similar things this time around. Things that haven't existed that computers can't do. Or perhaps we'll decide that the better solution is for humans to find meaning in things outside of their work. Perhaps we can learn the joy of self-improvement simply for the sake of doing it, and can form a society where people have enough. This story is a tiny glimpse into the good and bad of that type of society. A snapshot of when a human proves that sometimes the greatest accomplishment isn't winning, but in pushing yourself to your limit. When people are reminded of something bigger than survival. If you enjoyed it, then you may enjoy my other stories. 
You can read and download many of them by becoming a Patreon. You can buy them on Amazon or sign up for my free weekly newsletter and get one of my novels for free. Thanks. Elton Gar.